great thanks to the music makers under the direction of Winnie Stribling and Norma Jean Bunker. Could you give them another big hand? All right, what a way to begin worship. Uh, come, come, everybody worship. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Sam Yoon. I'm the pastor here at San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. And it is my joy and honor to invite you into a celebration of God's presence, of young hearts, of, of being together as a family of God. Uh, most of you know that it is uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, just want to take a quick poll here in the congregation, in the community. Uh, anyone rooting for the Niners? Yes? Some of you are wearing the colors. Okay, very good. Anyone rooting for the Chiefs? Okay, a few of you. Anyone rooting for the commercials? Yes! Me, or maybe the seven-layer dip that we get to enjoy. <clears throat> Whoever you may be rooting for or not, uh, I hope that we will all be rooting for the spirit uh, of ending hunger today or helping to do so. Uh, you are reminded throughout the week to bring in your canned goods. And I brought a couple of mine. The rest are in the bin already, but um, chili beans pinto with garlic flavoring and seasoning, one of my favorites. And I love, I love corn. Uh, but we have been challenged by the Great Plains Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. That's where the Kansas City Chiefs are located. Their bishop challenged our bishop, Bishop Minerva Carcano, to a competition. Who can raise the most food uh, for delivery and contribution to our local food pantry? And so many churches are, are participating in this today. And for those of you who have brought in uh, your contributions... Thank you, thank you so much. And I just want to let you know, if you, if you forgot, uh, you still have time. We're collecting these until February the 15th. Uh, of course, uh, yesterday was also uh, Lunar New Year. I don't know if you knew that. Lunar New Year. This is the year of the dragon. The year of the dragon uh, signifies power and strength and success. And apparently, the year of the dragon is supposed to be a very lucky year for those that are born in the year of the monkey. I am the year of the monkey, and uh, monkeys are characterized by intellect and charisma and, and goofiness. That pretty much sums up who I am, right? Um, anyways, I, I want to say to each and every one of you, happy lunar, lunar New Year as well. Today is a super Sunday for many reasons, not just because it is the Super Bowl, but because our super and amazing, gracious, loving God invites us to this place. So grateful, again, for the blessing of the music makers and a warm welcome to the families and, and the parents of the music makers. Thank you for sharing your children with us and blessing us in the way that you have. Great job, you guys. Great job. Thank you so much. Yes, one more time. For all those here in this beautiful sanctuary in Alamo, great to see your beautiful faces. For those joining online as well, we are so grateful for your presence. Today, we gather to worship our God who loves us and who knows us. And if you are ready to do so, if you are willing and able, would you stand as living water uh, leads us in our opening song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Let me hear you, church. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power.
eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. That is the cry of your heart today, that you would see the Lord high and lifted up. You know, there's many things that we pursue uh, during the week, and uh, we have this blessing uh, each and every Sunday to gather as a community of faith, to worship God, to glorify God, and to have God touch our hearts and move upon our lives in the way that only God can. And so we make sure that every time we gather that we spend at least a few moments in in community prayer. As you know, there's many things that are going on around the world, brokenness and and darkness, fear and loss. And and we experience many of the same things here in our community as well. And though I may not know exactly everything that you carry in your heart this morning, There is this God of this universe that knows you so, so well. God sees everything that you go through, all of your joys and all of your pains. And especially when we're going through difficult times, that is when I believe God is closest to you. Now, we gather also in the spirit of celebration. Uh, You may notice that there are these beautiful flowers uh, on the altar today. They are in celebration of Millie Loper's 95th birthday tomorrow. And so, happy birthday to Millie. You can also see uh, there's a rose on the altar. um, And whenever there's a rose on the altar, that signifies new life and and a birth in our community. And and we want to give congratulations to proud grandparents, Marianne and Bruce Templeton, on the birth of their granddaughter, Cora Rose Gallo, Galloway on January the 17th. In the midst of birth and celebrations of many years, we also lift up to you some of the concerns of our community. Uh, we continue to pray for our good friend Bill Dastic, who this past week has been moved into a rehab center and His spirit is good, you know, Bill, his humor is high, uh, but he still continues to struggle. So we ask for your prayers to surround him and Julie and the whole family. And I'm also saddened to share the news of another loss in in our community. Um, This past week, we had Mary Nigreen, who passed away. At the age of 101, 
on February 8th. She lived a blessed and long life. But we thank God for her life as we now commit her into the hands of her loving God. Amen. And so with whatever prayers that you may have brought, let me lead us in this time of community prayer. And I, I try to remind you each week, though I'm the one who's actually verbalizing the prayer, we're praying this all together. We are one body in Christ. And the Bible says that when two or three are gathered in God's name, that Jesus is in the midst. I hope you believe that. I, ho I hope you don't see Jesus as someone that is far off from this moment and this place, but the Jesus who walks with us in every moment of our lives. And so with that, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this incredibly beautiful day, this day that we have never seen before, and this day that we will never see again. But in this day, you call us to rejoice and be glad in it, that we would hear the invitation, come, come, everybody worship. God, our hearts are open to you. The eyes of our hearts are open to you, to see you high and lifted up, and to give you all the glory that you so rightfully deserve. And we pray, Lord, that even though in this past week we may have forgotten about you, that in this moment as you invite us into your house, into this beautiful sanctuary, this place of worship, that our hearts will be filled with your presence, with your love, your grace, your mercy, and your hope, God. And with that hope, we lift up these many prayers that are present in our community. We pray for those who continue to struggle with and, and battle all sorts of um, physical illnesses, those who are struggling mentally or, or spiritually as well, those battling darkness and fear and anxiety. God, would you grant them your healing and, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. We, we also pray for this broken world that you love so very much. We pray for places of darkness and strife. We, we pray where it seems like violence is the everyday reality. And God, we pray that your shalom would break forth into the midst of those places of war, places of loss. Let your mercy fall in those places. And let your people intercede on behalf of this world that is broken. Let us be your hands and feet, God. We pray especially, Lord, today as many will gather all, all around this country in homes to celebrate uh, this incredible big NFL event with food and abundance. May we be reminded that there are those that hunger in this world, God, you know their struggles. You know the pains of those who don't have enough. And so, God, would you inspire us, move us to be the very answer to the prayer that we're lifting up. May we be called to feed those that hunger today. Help us not to forget about those who struggle in our very own communities as well as all around the world. And as we worship you today, as we are invited to celebrate Holy Communion at your table today, may we come with faith and joy and hope. As we pray all this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. member of the chancel choir of the lift group and a new member of the church council today i'm going to be reading from the book of first chronicles david praised the lord in the presence of the whole assembly saying praise be to you lord the god of our father israel from everlasting to everlasting Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. May we hear God's word in this lesson.
Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Chancel Choir. Um, I don't know about you, but I have been so enjoying uh, the various versions of, of the Lord's Prayer being sung over the past uh, several weeks. Amen. Uh, we've heard several versions in English, uh, one in French. And, and today, I don't know if you caught it, but in Russian, Russian, uh, and I, I want to say, uh, Ochin Krasiwi. How, how is that? I think that means I think that means very beautiful in in Russian. Uh, was my pronunciation? Eh, maybe I better stick with English. Uh, people tell me I, I do pretty good in English. So, um, friends, let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us in whatever language uh, we may receive God's word today. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God. We are grateful for who you are and what you have to offer to us in our journeys of, of, of life and faith. We're thankful for this moment of worship, this pause in the midst of what may have been a hectic and full week. But we thank you that here your spirit abounds, your goodness is abundant. And God, we, we believe that your desire is to speak to us words of hope and faith. So would you allow us to be ready, to be fully present, to have our eyes open, to see our ears open, to hear, and especially our hearts open to receive. And fill me with your Holy Spirit, God, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, I am uh, super excited today to wrap up the sermon series that we have been in over the past five weeks now, five weeks. Uh, I'm sharing with you the final installment today, uh, part six, in a message entitled, Thine glory forever. We have taken a deep dive into this very famous and familiar prayer, uh, words that have been recited, prayed, sung, uh, likely billions of times over the course of 2,000 years uh, of Christian history. And most people, uh, most of us uh, knew this prayer as the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer, but, but I have been reminding you week after week that actually it should be called the Disciples' Prayer. This is the prayer that is prayed for all, by all those who are serious and intentional about following Jesus. And, and while we have prayed it already just minutes ago and, and, and sung beautifully in, in Russian, thank you again, Chancel Choir, uh, let's go back to the uh, original, just one more time, found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. It's embedded in, in Jesus' first recorded public sermon, the sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. And I invite you to actually read it with me on the screen. We're going to do it super slowly, just word by word. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Uh, just a, rem a reminder that this prayer is also found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. So what I've been doing is I I've been breaking this down week by week, part by part. And, and since we are bringing the series to a close today, let me do a review 
of what we've learned over the past five weeks. A quick recap of the series. And I am going to go really, really quick here, so I suggest uh, you try not to blink, okay? Uh, so ready or not, here we go. This is what we've learned. Part one, our Father, the focus is on who we are praying to and not just what we are praying about. The word that Jesus uses in the Aramaic is Abba, our equivalent of Papa. The implication is intimacy, deep and personal connection with God. Part two, God's kingdom, God's will be done on earth as in heaven. Up there, come down here. That's what we're praying. There is this priority in the prayer that Jesus teaches us. Seek first God's kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. Part three, part three, then and only then can we pray for our needs Praying for our daily bread is praying for the bread of enough. Remember that epiousion, bread of enough. Praying this prayer reminds us that we, we do have enough. We do have enough. We have enough and that Jesus is enough. Part four, the prayer for forgiveness. We are reminded that our relationship with God is in fact affected by our relationship with others. The horizontal, the horizontal affects the vertical. How many times should we forgive? 77 times. Or 70 times 7. Do whatever it takes for however long it takes to make your relationships right. Yeah, it's that important. And last week, part 5... Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Actually, we learn God does not lead us into temptation. We lead us into temptation. The real prayer is for Jesus to lead us in our lives, that we would trust Jesus and follow his ways. This is what we call discipleship. And our cry is for Jesus to draw us onto himself. That's what we learn so far. Now take a deep breath. Or at least let me catch mine. <laughs> All right? Through these five parts, there is really one core lesson that we've been learning. See, the prayer that Jesus teaches us is not so much a formula for getting what we want as it is a framework for how we are to relate to God in our lives of faith. Praying this prayer positions us in complete trust and surrender to God. That's what we have been learning from week to week in this series. And we have been making the Lord's prayer our prayer, praying the Jesus way. But wait. There's more. There's more. And you may have noticed this already, but there's something missing in the original that Jesus taught in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, right? Right? Because when we pray this prayer, we don't conclude with, deliver us from the evil one. No. Our autopilot uh, muscle memory driven, mentally ingrained recitation of this prayer may not lead us into temptation, but it will lead us into automatically saying, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen? Amen. Yeah, that's how we conclude it. This is the traditional ending of the prayer that most of us prayed all our lives, all our lives. And the question that you may be asking is, well, why is it not in the original that Jesus taught? Where did it come from? And why do we pray it? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so so let, me, let me offer a little historical note first. 
This last line is not found in the er earliest manuscripts of the Bible. And actually, the early church added this line as a doxological response to the prayer. The word doxology means word or words of praise. And, and apparently, it was the practice of the early believers to always add some sort of praise or declaration of God's character at the end of every prayer. And the first time we, we see this in written form is in a writing called the Didache, Didache that is believed to have been composed uh, maybe uh, late uh, first century, early second century. And, and Didache is a Greek word meaning teaching. And what this Didache contains is various teachings about the Christian faith, like how to worship, or how to baptize, or how to take communion, and, and here, how, how to pray this prayer that Jesus taught. So it contains this disciple's prayer that we've been doing a deep dive on as Jesus taught it, plus this doxological response. And by the way, in the Didache, believers are instructed to pray this prayer three times a day. Uh, most of us, we may pray this at best once a week, but it was instructed to pray it three times daily. Imagine if you prayed this prayer three times every day, how it might change or bless your life. Now, at this point, uh, you may be thinking, okay, early believers added this doxology to what Jesus originally taught, but why this doxology? Why these words? I'm so glad you asked. Man, you are, you are asking all the right questions today. This is awesome. Good job. Um, so why these words? Well, while they may not be a part of Jesus' original teaching of this prayer, the words are actually found throughout Scripture and are words that would have been super familiar, especially for Jewish Christians. For example, this prayer that King David prays in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. The prayer is actually a dedication of an incredibly vast amount of resources that are uh, offered uh, to fund a major capital campaign to build the bigger and most beautiful temple possible for the Lord. By the way, this is really uh, David's last act as king before he turns over everything to his son Solomon before David dies. And David himself brings like an obscene amount of wealth from his own personal treasury. He's going to cut no corners, and he's going to hold nothing back. He's going to hold nothing back. And David's offering is so great, uh, it inspires all of his leaders and all of his commanders to also give uh, abundantly, abundantly as well. Needless to say, this is a pretty successful stewardship campaign. Speaking of which, if you didn't turn in your generation-to-generation -generation pledge cards yet, it is not too late. This is a small little plug to, to light a fire underneath you. But he, he, he makes this push. He offers pretty much all that he has. And then David prays this and. 1 Chronicles 29, 11. This is amazing. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Does this sound familiar? Of course it does. These are the words that are embedded in that doxological response that the early Christians added to Jesus' original teaching on the disciples' prayer. And note what these words are not saying. 
Okay? Note what these words are not saying. David is not praying, hey, God, look at all that I brought you. Look at the size of my gift. Look at my generous offering. Look at my effort. Look at me. That's not what David is praying right now. This is not David's prayer. David's prayer is, Lord, let me look at you. Let me look at you, your greatness, your power, your glory, your kingdom. And then he continues in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14. But who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. That's a great prayer. God, let me look at you and see how great you are, how, how powerful you are. It's all about your glory and your kingdom. And, and who, am, who am I? I? I mean, even what I give to you, God, even what I bring forth as my offering, I only have this because you gave it to me. This is that doxological praise that really becomes the amen to the prayer that Jesus taught. And unless we overlook this or misunderstand this, the prayer is our absolute acknowledgement of our utter dependence and devotion to God. In fact, there is actually something that comes after the amen, a response after the response, if you will. You see, the best response after we pray the disciples' prayer is to faithfully live out our lives as a praise to God, forfeiting all that is, quote-unquote, mine, to acknowledge all that is, quote-unquote, thine. This is the ongoing tension of our lives. Mine versus thine. My will versus God's will. My kingdom versus God's kingdom. And friends, the only way that this prayer can be prayed sincerely, authentically, and powerfully is if we are willing to actually live it out, right? That our very lives become the doxological praise. That our lives become the praise response to who God is and all that God has given. Remember, whatever you don't turn into praise turns into pride. Whatever you don't give glory to God for, it's like you saying that it's all because of you. And it's not. It's not, friends. So let me close this sermon today and this whole series with a quote from Henry Ward Beecher. And you may be surprised I'm closing this sermon at 1045. <laughs> Miracles do happen in this church, friends. <laughs> Miracles do happen. You, you, may, you may all know that Henry Ward Beecher is the amazing American clergyman and amazing abolitionist of the 19th century. He was a great preacher and presenter, but this is what he said. I love this. I used to think the Lord's Prayer was a short prayer. But as I live longer and see more of life, I begin to believe there is no such thing as getting through it. If a man in praying that prayer were to be stopped by every word until he had thoroughly prayed it, thoroughly prayed it, it would take him a lifetime. 
And friends, it took us six weeks to do a deep dive into the disciples' prayer, praying the Jesus way. And so I absolutely agree with Henry Ward Beecher, a thousand percent. It will take us a lifetime. It should take us a lifetime. So let's pray this prayer daily, three times per day maybe even, or more. And let's live it out constantly, consistently, tenaciously, relentlessly, without ceasing and without end. In fact, let's pray it forever. Thine glory, God's glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take a moment. I think we just don't do this enough. That we would humble ourselves before the God who has given us everything, even our very own lives. And we may complain from time to time about the things that we don't have. But the truth is, God has given us so much. We have the bread of enough. Every day, Jesus is the bread of life. And sometimes I feel like we walk around, and, and I know I do this, I walk around like it's all up to me, that it's all about me. But it's not. There is a God who calls us to lay down what is mine, to experience what is thine, that we might give God all the glory. Even people playing a game in Las Vegas this afternoon, people of faith like Brock Purdy, Patrick Mahomes, they will give God the glory. And we may scoff at that and say, does God really care about who wins the Super Bowl? Maybe not. But God does care about who gets the glory. And I bless and honor these athletes to give us the example when millions and millions of people will be watching to keep count of how many touchdowns are made, that there is some reminder that God deserves all the glory today. Amen? All the glory. So can we do that? Can we just humble our hearts before God as we go into this prayer? And especially as we get ready to come forward to celebrate communion at his table of grace, this feast of his love. Don't come with pride in your hearts. Come with thanksgiving. Come, come thanking God for everything that's been given to you. Thine glory forever. Let's pray. God, first, I just want to lift up my friends here to you. I pray that what has been spoken in this sanctuary, what has been taught and received in faithful hearts throughout the past six weeks, will be so firmly, deeply planted in the hearts of my friends here. That this prayer will not just change our circumstances, but God, that this prayer would change us. Let us be transformed by what Jesus teaches us. Let us be transformed by the prayers we speak off our lips. Let us be transformed as we are reminded that when we stand before you, God, you are God and we are not. Let us be transformed by the reminder that you have given us much. That you for so loved this world that you gave your one and only son, Jesus Christ, 
the bread of enough, the bread of life, that whosoever would believe in him would share in your glory, the glory forever. And so, God, we praise you today. And though we may say amen at the end of this prayer and at the end of this service, may our lives be a living praise to you. May our lives be a doxological response after the amen. And in everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we would think or pursue, may it give you and only you all the glory. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, I'm so overjoyed each time we get to celebrate this. Um, you may notice that this is not the first Sunday of the month, but we decide to uh, push off our Communion Sunday one week uh, so that we might include uh, the many women who were on the women's retreat with Pastor Dan Sturdivant last weekend. Um, all of you faithful women, welcome back. It's great to see you. You know, this is a sacrament, but I, I like to consider this like family time. It's when Jesus invites each and every one of us as family, as beloved children of God. And Jesus has prepared this incredible feast of his love for us. And you know that the elements that are present at this table takes us back 2,000 years ago. Uh, on that night when Jesus sat in an upper room with his disciples for the last time. They were celebrating the Passover. This was the night before Jesus would lay down his life on the cross and, and be crucified for all of our sins and for the sins of this world. But as he sat with his disciples, even with one who would betray him, one who would deny him, he invited them and he loved them. He invites us and he loves us. And he took bread that night something so common and ordinary, and he gave thanks to God, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, his friends, saying, take this, all of you, and eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, in that moment, the ordinary became extraordinary. It's what God does with our lives all of the time. Same way after the supper was over, he took the cup of the covenant. He gave it a new name. This is a new covenant, the new promise that I make with you, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He gave thanks to God. He blessed it. He shared it with his disciples, his friends, and he shares it with each and every one of us, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from this. This is my blood which has been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this, all of you, and as often as you drink from this, do this in remembrance of me. And so we remember as God's beloved children and as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice and the love and the salvation that has been offered to us through Jesus' death and the hope that we have in his resurrection. And so we pray over these gifts of bread and cup that they would be for us the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus reminding us that we are welcome to his table. That we are so, so loved. That we are forgiven of our sins. That we are redeemed, we are healed, and we are made whole. And so, God, as we all come forward to celebrate this reminder of your goodness, may we come with joy, with great thanksgiving, with humility in our hearts, and with faith.
For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Friends, in a moment, our ushers will invite you to come forward to receive uh, Holy Communion. Uh, This invitation is for everyone. In our church, we practice what is called open table, uh, open communion, which means everyone is invited. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church for you to participate in God's love. God's love is for all people. Amen. And because we want everyone to feel included, we do also have gluten-free option. If that is your preference, Uh, there will be a a little uh, table in the front that has those available. Otherwise, as you come forward, uh, the stewards and myself will will be serving you with, with gladness and joy in our hearts. And so, can I invite the communion stewards to come forward, please?
that our giving is an act of worship, reflecting God's generosity towards us and declaring our trust in God. Our offerings, tithes, and support for special projects and needs empower us to do life with God and with each other and to be healing agents in the world. To give, you can scan the QR code on the screen Place your gifts in the offering plates located in the narthex. Mail your checks to the church office or give online at srvumc.org slash give. Let us now continue to worship as we offer our gifts to God.
seated in one heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was great. What could what is yours, that you might use this offering and the giver for the building up of your kingdom and the glory of your name. Amen.
Well, today is Super Sunday, as Pastor Sam mentioned, with all the shouting and cheering for the right guys. And this week comes Ash Wednesday. No shouting, certainly more contemplative. Please join us at 7 p.m. as we enter this season of Lent. But if this conflicts with your Valentine dinner plans, please drop in at lunchtime from noon to 1 p.m. right here, and Pastor Sam will offer imposition of the ashes right here in the sanctuary. Please consider ways to guide and support during this emotional and blessed time. We can suggest two ways. The Lenten devotional offered by our UMC conference and the Marcus Borg and John Crossan book, The Last Week. Easy to find. Open the Friday memo to the Ash Wednesday section and just do a click here. Volunteers are invited to help again at the Contra Costa Food Bank, Saturday, March 2, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoyable and fruitful for all. Go to Church Center and do an easy sign in. Or, again, open the Friday memo to the Food Bank section and just do a, yeah, a click here. And remember our coffee fellowship offered today by Dialogue for Change right after worship service. And now please rise if so inclined and join in singing verses one and three of Rejoice, the Lord is King. people said amen. amen friends it's been such a blessing to be together and worship today great thanks to all those who helped make our worship so beautiful and meaningful from the music makers to the living water to the chancel choir to our readers our ushers our greeters our uh, online media streaming team and Nadia yes of course Nadia and Jeff Howe and all the all the uh, volunteers and, and directors that are loving on young people today. Friends, this is church, but all the glory goes to our God. Amen. Amen. As you go forth from this place of worship, may you go forth living out your lives as a doxological response to all that God has given and all that God is for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his wonderful and loving face to shine upon you and grant you joy, peace, purpose, and praise in knowing Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and forever. Amen.